Thank you guys for joining us today. Over the past few years, you've heard a lot about QSC moving into meeting room technology. The introduction of the Core 110 kind of started that. Um, and we're extending that with our AV to USB bridging solution. So we're gonna take a look at a conference room to kind of define what we're talking about when we talk about meeting room technology. We talk about your average size room having a table with anywhere from eight to 24 people at it. A credenza perhaps on the wall with a small AV rack located inside, a rack mounted computer, a Blu-ray player, an amp, a processor, nothing that's too uncommon or incredibly different from the conference rooms we all sit in day in, day out. In addition, we have some monitors on the wall, usually two monitors if we're doing video conferencing, maybe just a single monitor if we're doing presentation. Some surface mounted speakers for program audio, camera on the wall, some overhead speakers for conferencing audio. Again, this is not a drastic, weird, incredible executive conference room. This is just your everyday conference room. Some beautiful ceiling mics that are running audio over the network. Inside the rack, we've got ourselves a Core 110F. It's a software appliance for audio DSP, but it doesn't stop there. It also has control and video routing capabilities. It is built on Intel processing with real-time Linux operating system that we write from scratch. It's got uh, all audio processing you want, including acoustic echo cancellation. If we take a look at the backside, it's got a class-leading 24 I.O., eight inputs, eight outputs, and in the middle, in the blue, are eight flex channels, which in software you can define to be either an input or an output. It's got 16 channels of GPIO. It's got a USB-B connector to plug into your computer for AV to USB bridging. It's got multiple VoIP soft phone instances, so a single core can run four separate instances of a soft phone or a VoIP telephony, as well as plain old telephone system POTS for analog uh, retrofit installations. The ability to decode media streams, as well as 128 by 128 um, QLAN channels. This is a device built for soft conferencing. Skype for business, WebEx, Zoom, Jabber, whatever flavor of computer-based codec you want to use, this can support. So today, if I wanted to build a computer-based video conferencing system and realize some of the savings over a hardware codec, this is kind of what my installation looks like. A high-quality USB camera, a USB extender, a USB audio system, uh, a remote control to control the camera, and a physical plug in the camera in the wall. And there's a legitimate cost savings over hardware-based codecs in this enterprise. But now say I want to use a laptop, I need to buy another hub, I need to extend my audio out to the laptop. I've now bought something that is another point of failure in my system. So I paid money to get a poorer result. Not to mention I have to call the electrician to come in and install the outlet. What if I want to use a rack-mounted computer or a computer on the table? I now have bought the extenders and the hub, so that way I have one USB signal, but I need to buy a switch to choose between which computer gets the USB signal. If I buy a switch, I need to buy a control system to control the switch. So my cost savings method has now become almost as expensive, if not more expensive, than a hardware codec, and potentially more frustrating with more points of failure. What I can't do in this paradigm is I can't add more cameras. I can't scale, we say. Um, can't go from one camera to five to 20 if I needed it. Unless I bought an AV matrix switcher and a bridging device, which is not an uncommon way of doing this. I did this for years at a different company. 10 cameras in, four bridges out. I bought a nice chassis matrix switcher and that was my system designed for years. But again, I've bought more equipment and created more potential points of failure. But if you start with a network switch at the heart of your installation, which we all, QSC always say, let's start with a network switch. You add a core to it, whether it's our core 110F for in-room, uh, enterprise core, or someday a Dell server and a data center. You can connect the core 110F directly to your computer in the rack. No need to buy an extender. No need to buy a distribution package for your USB. You can start with one camera. We'll show you later you can add in as many cameras as you want. And then now the simple beauty of a 
full pan tilt zoom camera, as you can see, this is a lot larger than it is in real life, so this is not actual size, don't worry. Um, Max is out at 1080p resolution, and I can bore you with all the specs, but suffice to say, it's a great camera, just as good as everything else on the market. All we're changing is the way that we transport the camera image. No need for hard, in-depth programming. Just like any other device, as a QSIS peripheral, drag and drop GUI configuration, drag and drop controls. We have the full scripting engine if you need to get very granular with your controls. But for the most part, you can completely control it um, from QSIS Designer and drag and drop form. So we have our TSC 7T for control. Native interfaces, no need for, no need for a control processor. That's built in. Thanks to the sound effects here, we can tell that Patrick is moving the camera. And you get real-time preview on the touch panel, as you do in the computer. So say I need one camera, say I need 30 cameras, say I need 200 cameras for some reason. If however many cameras you need to buy, when you're using it as a network property, there's no additional hardware. You can also switch cameras which is something you can't do with any other thing. So our TSE 7T can not only control our devices, but it can also be interfaced with Lutron or Draper or any other device to control room properties. Now say I need bridging at the table. We talked about in the rack with the Core 110F, but at the table we have a very sleek, svelte even, uh, IO USB bridge, a small appliance that gets a network connection in and a USB connection to your computer. So anywhere you can get network, you can get bridging. No need to run an HDMI extender, no need to pull wire through conduit, no need to worry about plenum restrictions. Anywhere that you can run your network, you can get bridging, which means you can get bridging in different places, different days with the same hardware if you need it. It's a very flexible solution, again, with the network at the center. So we'll add in our BYOD device and our IO USB bridge, draw it up to the network, there we go, we've got conferencing everywhere we need it. What we've done is we've used our network switch, which is something we have in the installation anyways, because everything sits on the network, uh, as our matrix switcher. So we've created a virtual mini to any matrix using the QSYS peripherals. Now we'll talk about some of the other components in the conference room, and we'll kind of show you how we meet the needs of the conference space. Uh, small form factor amplifiers, half rack unit can be mounted side by side. Uh, we have two and four channel versions, so in a single rack space you can get eight channels uh, of audio if you need it. We'll go around back and look at all the beautiful, all the design engineers are very excited because they show the back of it in a sales presentation. It's convection cooled, that's not really super exciting on its own, but it's quiet, it's silent, so you can put it in your conference room, not have to co-locate it somewhere else. It's got some dip switches. And while they're animating, I'll tell you, in high Z mode, you can get 250 watts per channel. In low Z mode, you can get 200 watts per channel. There's flexible mounting options. You can mount it underneath the table in a very small form factor. You can mount it side by side in a rack unit, or you can mount it as a single rack unit appliance by itself. And all the mounting hardware is included with it, so there's no additional mounting kits to buy. Again, why would you pay more to use the equipment you already bought? So outside of the amplifiers, we also have a full range of interoperability with other network devices. I'm sure those of you in the audio space have heard a lot about AES-67 this week. I've probably said it 200 times, and I may be the person who said it the least in our booth. Uh, AES-67 compatibility is huge for our industry. Imagine a conference room with a network drop to the microphone, sure MXA 910 here, network drop to the touch panel, network drop to the core, power to the core, and that's your entire installation besides speakers. No need to get a physical Dante card. Comes with a built-in plugin. We na we've had plugins for a while for different devices, everything from DNB, Technic, all the way to now we're shipping. Our software now includes the Shure MXA 910 plugin. We also have a full line of ceiling speakers. Um, we have low profile versions, full body versions. We have pendant versions, and we have surface mount versions of the same speaker. 
They have DMT technology, so that actually gives you better coloration throughout the frequency ranges, uh, as well as has incredible off-axis performance for these speakers. And we'd love to take you over to our speaker cave, as we call it, to get a good look at them. One key thing is they're sonically matched, which means whether I buy a stereo pair or some overheads, they all have the exact same sonic quality, uh, which is important as you move throughout your facility.